Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about how to do to build a confidence interval for the slope and we're going to use regression to help us do that. So here's the situation. So let's say we wanted to map height and weight. We want to put these on a scatter plot. So the question I'm asking is how much would an adult female weigh if she were five feet tall? Now you probably know some females who are five feet tall and you should realize that there are lots of different possibilities for this answer. You could have five feet tall women that don't weigh very much. You could have five feet tall women that weigh more. So you could have a wide range of responses. However, even within that range of responses, that distribution should be normally distributed. If you take a large enough sample size, you know by now that you will get a normal distribution when you're measuring the height versus the weight. So we have our five feet tall women, and we have all these different possibilities for five feet tall women. And if we put them on a, on a scatter plot, we wind up getting a normal distribution of five feet tall women. Now, what about other heights? What if we moved up to 64 inches, so five feet four inches? Well, in this case, we would get another normal distribution, a set of dots, but they would be probably a little bit heavier than the five foot tall women because now we're four inches taller. So these women, our odds are, going to be a little bit heavier. And then what about the next one? Well, the next one, five feet eight odds are they're going to be a little bit heavier on average because they're getting taller. And the taller you are, you tend to get a little bit heavier. However, all three heights have a normal distribution. Now, if we wanted to build the true least squares regression line to map these, this scenario, we could take the mean of each distribution, the mean of the 60 inch, the mean of the 64 inch, the mean of the 68 inch, those are what the red dots are, and we could draw our line going right through there. And then we could draw a line, an equation of a line for that. And the formula for that line, that equation, is mu sub y, the mean of the y's, equals alpha, which is the y-intercept, the true y-intercept, plus beta, which is the true slope, times x. Now, what about the standard deviations of all these normal distributions? Well, you can tell by looking at it that ideally we want the standard deviations of all of these normal distributions to be the same. That way the spread and the vari variability of all the different heights are the same, so we're able to compare and draw lines going through them. So to build a regression model, there's a couple of things that are required. First, if we're trying to calculate the mean response, that's the m sub y, the mu sub y, it has a straight line relationship with x. If it's not a straight line, we can't do it. So it has to be a straight line. And the slope B and the intercept A, those are unknown parameters. They're out there somewhere. They do exist. They are, there is some population for which they're defined. We just don't know what they are. So we're trying to estimate them. For any fixed value of x, the response, the y value, will vary according to a normal distribution. And repeated responses of y have to be independent of each other. So this is our independence assumption. And we also have established on the previous graph that all the y y's have to vary according to a normal distribution. Otherwise, we can't do this regression model. And the third thing is the standard deviation has to be the same for all values. S sub y, the standard deviation of y, is also an unknown parameter. To build a regression model, these are things that have to be true. It has to be a straight line. It has to vary according to a normal distribution and the standard deviation of y has to be the same for all the values. So let's take a look at pro golfers. And the question is, does greater distance off the tee translate to lower scores? So on your chart, on your notes, you have this same exact little spreadsheet here. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to put all of these numbers into, a, into the calculator. I'm going to do a scatter plot, and then I'm going to find a least squares line. Hopefully, you remember how to do this on your TI-84, because we did this a while back. Mean distance in list one, mean score in list two, do a linear regression, do a scatter plot, take a look and see what it is. And this is what it winds up looking like. Down at the very bottom, you can see the mean score formula. So the mean score, the average mean score, the estimated mean score is equal to negative 0 0.019, that's the, the slope, times the mean distance plus 76.58, and it has an R squared value of 0.11. We use, muse, we use y hat the mean score, the estimated mean score, to estimate mu sub y, the true numbers. Right? We don't know what the true slope is or what the true equation is, but we can use this sample of golfers that we've developed 
to estimate the true slope. The slope, in this case, negative 0 0.019, is an unbiased estimator of the true slope. We've heard that terminology. We know what unbiased estimators mean. And the intercept is also an unbiased estimator of the true intercept. So we can use both the slope and the intercept to estimate what the true slope and what the true intercept are. Now, in practice, we don't usually know sigma for the population regression line. So we estimate it. And then we also have to estimate the spread of the sampling distribution. So here's the formulas. The standard deviation of the residuals is given by this formula. You take every residual, square it, add them all together, divide by n minus 2, and take the square root. That's going to be the standard de deviation of the residuals. In other words, how far, on average, is each point from the line? Note that, in this case, degrees of freedom are n minus 2. We have two variables, so we have to take away two of them to make our degrees of freedom. The standard error of the slope is given by that formula. In S, you just found. S sub x, you would calculate off of your list of x values, and then times n minus 1. And we use that to calculate the standard error of the slope. All right, so one more question that I'll show you. We have another set of data, and here's the model. We have students who've, we have a study on student drinking and blood alcohol content. So they asked volunteers at Ohio State to drink a randomly assigned number of cans of beer, and then 30 minutes later, a police officer measured their blood alcohol content. We're going to use our calculator to find a regression equation. Then we're going to calculate, we're going to answer the question, what does the value A represent in the context of this problem? What we're trying to do, the goal, the ultimate goal in this section, is to create a confidence interval for the slope of the regression line. So we are going to be building a confidence interval, just like we've done in the past, except instead of trying to estimate a mean or a proportion, we're going to try to estimate the slope of the regression line. So here's our conditions. Anytime we're doing any of these inference tests, we have these conditions, and you're accustomed to this. For regression inference, it's got a couple of other little assumptions, conditions that you have to deal with. The first condition is that the mean response must have a linear relationship. If it's not linear, it doesn't work. To check linears, we check the scatter plot. Look at the scatter plot, see if it looks like it's a line. Check the residual plot, see if there's any pattern. Second condition, the data must be independent. So we look to see, was the data gathered through random assignment? Was it gathered through random sampling? Those are things we want to look for. And you can also look, check the 10% condition. Is the population 10 times the sample? Number three, the response variable y must vary normally about the true regression line. That was the very first slide I showed you with height and weight. All of the y values varied normally around that regression line. And to check that, we check a box plot or a histogram. Usually, I just check the box plot of the residuals. So we calculate our residuals, we check the box plot, we look to see if it's symmetric, if there's any outliers, and if not, then we're able to assume that normality is going to, going to be all right. Next up, fourth thing, there is equal variance. To check the variance, we check the scatter plot, and we check the residual plot, and we look to see if the amount of scatter is roughly the same from the smallest to the largest. If the amount of scatter is roughly the same, then we are safe concluding that there's equal variance. And lastly, the data must be produced randomly. Now, I know Mr. Loeschel doesn't like acronyms, but when you're doing a, a regression a confidence interval for a slope like this, you can use the acronym LINER to help you remember the five things to check. So LINER, is it linear? That's the L. I, is it independent? N, is it normal? E, is it equal? And R, is it random? So LINER. Now, since he doesn't like acronyms, when you come into class tomorrow, I want all everyone in his class to be chanting liner, liner, liner. He'll have no idea what you're talking about. All right, one other rule. We are using a t-distribution, so we're back to our old friend, the t-distribution. But this time, we're using n minus 2 degrees of freedom instead of n minus 1. And here's, here's kind of what the goal is, the ultimate goal in what we're doing. Suppose that you have a least squares regression line, and it has a horizontal line. The question is, would height be useful in predicting weight? And the answer is no, because everyone on this line weighs the same. A 68 inch tall person, a 60 inch tall person, they all weigh the same. So height doesn't help me at all. Now what's the slope of a horizontal line? 
hopefully you remember back from Algebra 1, the slope of a horizontal line is 0. And if you get a slope of 0, that means there is no relationship between x and y. So if we're building a confidence interval, and our confidence interval is from negative 5 to 3 for the slope, that means it contains 0, which means there's a possibility that there is no relationship. However, if our confidence interval is from 3 to 7, slope is not included in there, in which case there is definitely a relationship because slope of 0 is not included. Now, formulas. This is our good friend, the formula for confidence interval. The statistic we're going to use, instead of mu or instead of x bar or instead of p, we're going to use b, b for the slope. Critical value, t star, same thing we've done all along. Standard deviation is the standard error of the slope. I gave you that formula a minute ago, and I'll put it up here again if you didn't write it down. The degree of freedom, we're going to use n minus 2, and we use that to help us figure out the t critical value. The standard error of the slope, again, is this formula. We will, of course, be spending lots of time in class doing lots of examples and going over this in more detail, and I'll make sure that everybody's clear about what, they, what these formulas are, when you have to use them, and what you have to memorize. So back to our example. So we have this example. We want to find the least squares regression line, the correlation coefficient, and the coefficient of determination. To do this, I put all the data in my calculator, list 1 and list 2. Then I did linear regression, AX plus B. If you don't remember how to find that, you should find that on your calculator tonight before you come into class, so that, that way you'll be ready to go. And this is what I got. So the estimated blood alcohol content, that's what the little hat means. BAC the little hat over it, is equal to negative 0.0127 plus 0 0.018 times the number of beers. The R value was 0.8943 and the R squared was 0 0.7998. So it's a, it is a strong positive correlation. Remember, we talked about finding the meaning, explaining the meaning of slope and explaining the meaning of coefficient correlation. The slope was 0 0.018, which means that there is approximately, that's a very key word, you must always include the word approximately when you're talking about this, so underline, underscore, put a little star next to it. There is approximately a 1.8% increase in blood alcohol content for every beer. The, co the coefficient of determination says approximately 80%, remember it was 79.98, 80% of the variation in blood alcohol content can be explained by the linear regression of blood alcohol content on the number of beers drunk. We're going to estimate our, our A, our B, and our S. We're going to use our data. So we had our data. We're going to estimate A was from our calculator, negative 0.0127. B was also from the calculator, 0 0.0180. And the residuals, the S, that's also from the calculator, 0 0.0204. Next up, we're going to create three different plots, a scatter plot, a residual plot, and a box plot. Spend some time tonight rem reminding yourself how to, cal to graph all of these things on a calculator. So first we did a scatter plot, blood alcohol content versus beers, looks nice and straight like a straight line. A residual plot, no clear pattern there, which is good. And then a box plot, looks symmetric, no outliers. So these are the three plots we're going to refer to. So now that we've done all of this work, we've done all this stuff in our calculator, we figured out A, we figured out B, we figured out S, we drew these three graphs, we're finally ready to do a 95% confidence interval. So first our assumptions, remember we have to do liner. Simple random sample, that takes care of the randomness. The residual plot is randomly scattered, that takes care of the linearity. They're evenly spaced, that means S sub Y is approximately equal, that takes care of the E part. The box plot is approximately symmetrical. That takes care of the normality. And then we also know they are independent because it told us that earlier. You want to make sure you show all the different graphs. Using our formula, calculate our T star value based off a degree of freedom of 14. Throw in the two numbers the calculator gives us and you can come up with your confidence interval. And then finally, we can draw our conclusion. We're 95% confident that the true slope of the least squares regression line of blood alcohol content in beers is between 0 0.0128 and 0 0.0231. All right, I know I went pretty fast. Hopefully you wrote everything down. We will be practicing some in class tomorrow. So when you come in, be ready to go. And
play around with the calculator a little bit tonight. Make sure you remember how to do all those scatter plots and linear regressions because that's going to be important in this chapter.